Good afternoon. It's September the 17th at 4.30. Uh, this is the Tourism Board of Sumner County. I am um, Mary Janung, I'm County Commissioner, and I am the co-chair, and I'm filling in for David Staples, who's not here today. I'd like to call to order everyone here. Um, feeling. We have Deborah uh, Holmes is absent. She's uh, in a meeting. Ms. Govan is not here, and um, I think that's it. But anyway, um, I'd like to have a, a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, approval of the minutes. I'd like a motion to approval of the minutes. Do we have one, one set of minutes or two? Two. 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 How, how will we? I will abstain from September's minutes. Okay. I'll move to accept the vote. I'll uh, see what else I want to say. I'll All in favor, say aye. Aye. Anybody here for public comment? Oh, no. May I get your name for reference? Oh, I'm sorry. Eric, E-R-I-C-J-A-N-E-C-K. Thank you. Thank you. In the old business section, we are now at confirmation bylaws. Revisions are completed, and Shannon, I it looks like you will be presenting that. Um, oh, I didn't. I didn't know that until I saw the thing. But yes, the revisions are completed, and I emailed those to the board when I got them from the law office in August. Ready to be approved? Yeah. I just wanted to ask if I can get a copy of those. Okay, you should have them in your email. But I can send another. I'll email them to you. Okay. And does anybody have any questions about them? That would, do we need to go ahead and approve them? I think technically we approved them last. I think we approved them, but it's pending, pending changes. Pending changes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was all good. Yeah. Yeah. So under new business, we have a um, a header for the Zoom meeting for special call to now meeting. I'm not sure what this is, but um, mm -hmm. intelligent. Okay. Um, so the issue was that that special call meeting a month ago took us five minutes. Yes, that long. Yeah. 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 It was eight minutes. So the issue was that for special call meetings, which don't require an agenda to be presented in advance and are just to vote on things. Just to vote has to be. Yeah. But just, usually it's just for one item. One item, and yeah. it has to be advertised. No, in our bylaws, we changed it to only on the tourism site because we we are not. We are 501c6, okay. but we also, in the bylaws, removed the meeting. Yeah. So the, the issue was because that meeting took us eight minutes, um, there was a motion to discuss whether something like that, which was just for a vote, um, could be done by a thing. I think. And the attorney's office was going to check on that. Yeah, okay, and, yeah, yeah. which is fine. That was that's just what the, the discussion was. We, we can just push I mean, that to next. We can meeting. push that to old business. And that way we can review it again. Mm -hmm. we get our, our have to get that feedback from the people. Yeah. And then the next thing is paper or digital documents you may need. <coughs> What was that about? I, uh, there's these. Oh, do the, we just send it electronically in advance, or do you want a paper copy Well, the only thing is, and this is my comment, that, you know, I'm a paper person, but I read this stuff online. However, there may be people here that want a copy. I wouldn't print so many of them. I mean, I, the way it happened in chamber was that we, she went around and asked everybody on paper, or you just 
you know, things have been kind of improved, or do you want to just have on the computer? Most people did what they did. If some people get hacked, and some people don't, they use a computer. I personally, you know, I can print my own out, but then again, there may be people here in the audience that the phone would like to see it. So that's the only suggestion I have is maybe print five. I wouldn't print a dozen of when I when you email, I read it, but that one's what a week ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can barely remember what happened yesterday. So <laughs> last week I have a paper copy, even though I read it. I would say yeah. I, I like the paper copies, but also as the meeting laws requires that we have a few extra of everything. Mm -hmm. So you could just make enough for the board members. So you've got what or in yourself. So if you make. I don't know how many copies you're making now, as a rule. Oh, well, I made 20. Because oh, I wasn't okay. sure. Yeah. My, my, my question, because I am new. Mm -hmm. Are these available to the audience? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So if, if they ask. If they ask. Uh -huh. if I so probably ought to have one for each member, if you want one. The attorney and the each of you. Uh -huh. And then maybe one or two extras. Okay. And that's why I'm saying okay. 20. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. So, so we're going to do members and then double for the extras. They can do make copies there. Yeah. Yeah, I've worked on with other people. Yeah. 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 And we will continue. Yeah. We just wanted to know. All right. Okay. And then I'm going to do one under any questions on that or that. Okay. Director's report. All right. I am going quickly through this. Um, <clears throat> at the Comer House, we did have some damage due to windstorms. We reported that to you. The total cost this so far has been around $700. We don't feel like that was sufficient to make an insurance claim because we have a $5,000 deductible. So we just did the repairs and everything is back to normal, I think, at this point. And um, Talking about the museum, uh, we are meeting with Sumner County Museum, and they are open to sharing some of their collection that's in storage with us to display at the Comber House to help make, make it more of a welcome center. And um, that's in the works at this point. They have to go through their board for a very variety of things, and so we're just kind of going through that process. But we're looking forward to that. Uh, once we do have anything on display in our building, we would qualify for the grant from the state of Tennessee for museums. And that might help us have a little extra funding to repair the building as needed for cosmetic repairs. Uh, we have several trees that are diseased and at risk of damaging the building. We've had three different companies <coughs> come out and give us bids and assessments of what could and might happen. And um, we've identified what we think is the one we want to use. The price tag on that was $16,000. Oh, uh, how many trees? Uh, 115 for each and Yeah. But they would have to remove two complete trees, and then they're going to trim up quite a few others. Um, but the problem is that those trees go down, they will take part of the building with them. Are those in the back? Yeah, mm -hmm. one is right by the, the parking back? area, and the other one's on the other side, kind of off of the old office, we call it. Uh, Mid 10, Mid Tennessee Tree Service, uh, Tree Giant, and Affordable Tree Service. Yeah. The one we, the two that we like the most um, are arbor, arborists, mm -hmm. and so they know what they're doing, whereas the other one is more just a worker. And we like the arborist, and they also agreed to, within that contract, treating the disease for carpenter ants, mm -hmm. which seems to be a problem we have there. Now, our intention is to approach Rogers Group, since it's their building, and say, do you want us to save the building or let them go? Because I think that would be more of their, that's yeah, not that's normal. That's their property, right? That's their mm -hmm. property, and this is not normal maintenance. Right. So, and hoping. And that damage that was on the front <coughs> was from where a limb had hit that. Is it? Oh, I'm sure, because that tree over hangs the front porch. Yeah. <coughs> so... So, um, you're not thinking what I did not already think. Which is? When they had the damage to the front of that house. But the oh, trees yeah. needed. That hackberry exit. 
Okay, did y'all have trouble with that? Uh, with yes, um, yeah. yeah, not too bad. But. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, mm -hmm. there's a whole long list of what they mm -hmm. think needs to be done. In fact, they went around spray painting all our trees, so they're all marked now. But um, we will approach Rogers Group. We just want the board to know that we're going to do that, mm -hmm. and I'll report back as to what they say. Okay. Um, so moving on to Bull Creek Dock, um, really where this is at is the Army Corps of Engineers. Let me stop. I just wanted to let you know, please. I was uh, intern for today. Hold on, told me to let everybody know. We, the county, does not carry any insurance on Wolf Creek Dock. We stop to the tourism board to carry the insurance on. Which we do. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to make sure you knew that. Yes. And I will add to that. I was in the law office today, and he said they, although we voted to accept the to carry on the contract. Mm -hmm. Eric Fittler has yet to hear anything back from the Corps of Engineers. Right, and that's, but, I can address that. Okay, here. good. Um, basically, we were offered this kayak dock as a gift, free installation, free dock, by a gentleman that is very well known on the lake there by the Army Corps and others, uh, and he's quite the character. Um, after going back and forth with the Army Corps in a very cooperative method, they said they don't think it's a good idea because it's there's no base to the kayak dock. It's just, if you can picture a small boat dock with parallel piers, but there's nothing to rest the kayak on. So if you ever try to get into a kayak just in water, there's the risk of tipping. Mm -hmm. And he, So they felt like really we're increasing our risk there mm -hmm. by having that type of dock, and they recommended against it. So I said, done deal. We're not going to accept it. Mm -hmm. So um, okay. as a result of those conversations, the gentleman mm -hmm. at the... Uh, Army Corps of Engineers, whose name is Jacob Alders, mm -hmm. uh, is going to recommend a longer term lease instead of a, and it's like an annual renewal that we're doing right now. Because oh. uh, we're having to renew this like all the time and, and do it instead of a short term license agreement. Oh, he wants to do a lease I agreement. He, he renewed it. Okay. So he hasn't presented that to us yet, but that was his recommendation. So I told him to go ahead and get that together and bring it to us. Okay. I think I was about to off you. We know there's five years. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a lot less work for us. Um, going on to the Douglas Clark House, I just wanted you to be aware of what we're doing there. We have uh, our new tour guide, uh, Linda, who is just amazing, actually. Um, and you'll see I've included here some samples. She found these letters in the state archives from the boys during the Civil War that were not part of the collection out there. And she's continuing to do research when she doesn't have groups going through. And I just included those. I've got more if you want to see them that has interests you, but I just thought that was the neatest thing, that we're still finding new things related to the Look Douglas Clark. Look at the picture of their handwriting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, um, we did have Andrew over there, did reach out. He did a school group recently um, off, away from the Douglas Clark House to present to them as an outreach program. And um, I did get noticed one day recently we had over 40 tours in one day. Wow. wow. Yeah. So it, it comes and goes, but we'll take it. <laughs> We're proud of that. So moving on to marketing, um, we are very close to installing our AI travel buddy to our website. Really, we're just waiting for final approval on some of the, the uh, money coming from ARP and other grants. And those have just come in, so we're in a position now that we can move forward with that. Um, we are working with the U.S. Department of, Air of Commerce to internationalize the website, which means that it's easier access for people that are not United States. For instance, if you have a Canadian zip code, and we have a, a zip code field in there that only takes five digits, you're out of luck. This makes it, so they're doing an assessment to tell us where we have spots there that need to be improved so people from the international market can come in here. Um, and, and that's just a review. That would not include any program changes. Right. We would do the changes okay. because we can handle that in-house. It's, mm -hmm. it's $100 is what they're charging us for that, and we thought it was worth it. Um, I recently also, this is not in the report, but I, last week I went to a Southeast Tourism Conference down in Auburn, Alabama, 
and the Department of Commerce was represented there as well. And we talked extensively about, um, as I was telling you, uh, identifying the markets of people that have set, populated, settled this area, like Scotland and Ireland, and actually working with the U.S. government to target those markets for international travelers, because they tend to come to where their people settled, just like you went to Ireland to check your Scotland to check it out. And I've been to Ireland doing the same thing. So, uh, interesting. Yeah, so we're doing a lot of work there. Uh, we're not spending any money on it because international travel is, is not our big market, but there's a potential for it. Um, we have gotten Zarnico is up and running, and we actually have a training meeting with them tomorrow. I have included in your packet the latest Zarnico kind of dashboard that you can look at and see some data. Um, my goal for the future is not to just throw data at you, but to actually give you the story behind it. So hopefully in future meetings I'll be able to tell you kind of really what you're looking at. But as of today, I just wanted to include that for you. Um, this is an election year. And because of election years, people experience what's called advertising saturation. Therefore, we do see that um, cost of advertising and traditional media buys are more expensive, harder to get. And so we're paying attention to that as we are not out spending a lot of money on print media or anything else. It's just the nature of this year. And travel tends to be down in every election year as well, which we're seeing, uh, although Sumner County hopefully is up. Um, I am meeting with the Multi-County Tourism Alliance, which includes, uh, I'm going to all the county, Chatham, Chatham County, is that Cheatham. Cheatham. Cheatham County, I always get that one on Robertson County, and somebody else, and uh, anyhow, this is the other second quarterly meeting, we met out at the Springfield Robertson Airport, and um, it's in the early stages of perhaps becoming one of the recognized DMOs for the state tourism. Uh, right now, we are part of the Greater Nashville uh, Regional DMO, but they really don't do anything outside of Nashville. So our hope is to maybe as we create a northern ring around Nashville that we unite as counties and make an effort to draw visitors out of Nashville to our county. Is that Montgomery? Yes. Yeah, of course. Montgomery, yeah. yeah. And I also got to know several of those people at the conference last week, so that, that is going well. Um, moving on to finance, everything is balanced and current. We've reconciled all our accounts. We're not backwards anymore. Um, we did submit an RFP for a financial audit to the, and we listed out all those agencies. Not one responded. So we are going to go back to at least John Poole, who was aggressively pursuing our business at the beginning and did our last audit, and at least ask him why he didn't respond find out if there's something we did wrong or if we scared people away, but we don't know why nobody responded here. Therefore, the timeline is not going to work, but we, we still need to get an audit done. And um, as I've been talking to auditors, uh, CPAs uh, in the area, they explained to me that the audit we had done was a complete audit. It just maybe. financial audit of the agency or of the corporation. So whether or not we pursue John Poole is really, I guess, up to the board. But at this point, he may be our only lead. Was that, uh, did they consider it a friend? No. I don't believe it was a friend's sake. It is called a full financial audit. So we'll get more information on that and feed it out to him to have happened. Uh, back in August, I did uh, submit our annual report to the uh, Tennessee Secretary of State. I registered myself as the registered agent, and um, so we are current on that. We're in the process of being current as soon as they finish their side of the paperwork. Uh, I have a list of sponsorships there. I don't need to go over that. It's kind of a slow season right now, just a couple of fishing tournaments and people looking ahead to next year, but nothing exciting. Digital tracking information is there. Um, Cameron and Maddie have been out doing lots of videos. If you subscribe to Visit Sumner County, you'll see lots of TikTok and Instagram and uh, a lot of really, really fun, great videos promoting businesses, promoting destinations, promoting the county as a whole, um, promoting the fall season, everything. So uh, 
um, the numbers are good. The only one we're disappointed in was when I was Palmer House. Nobody really cares. I shared that one. I had a lot more hits on that than I had on the Apple and Doug. Well, good. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're bummed about that. Um, <laughs> I included a picture of the uh, display at the Sumner County at the uh, State Fair, and uh, it was beautiful. It's well done. Somebody in the office put that together. I tried to get there. I was late, stuck in traffic, and. Um, which is what happens when you go to the Tennessee State Fair. Yeah. Yeah. In Wilson counties. But um, but I did the honor of breaking it down and bringing it home. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I've included here some data for you. I'd like to keep you all informed on what's happening out there in the tourism world. Um, you know, Tennessee tourism broke the thirty billion dollar mark in 2023, and uh, they are very proud of that. It's still the second largest industry in the state after agriculture. And um, there's a lot of highlights here. I'm not going to cover these. You can read them as well as I can. Um, I did want to point out on the page 13 there. Um, from Reuters, the travel industry will account for a record $1 out of every $10 spent globally in the world. That's an amazing statistic. And uh, so our contribution to global GDP will increase from 12.1% uh, from 2023 to $11.1 trillion. And that is, means 10% of the global GDP mm -hmm. is part of, mm -hmm. is, is a result of tourism. And that is a new high. It's a record, at least as long as they've been keeping records. One of the seminars I went to at the conference was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. This guy said, Tourism is the oldest industry. If you think about it, man started making wheels. They started moving. They started always moving around. Because NASA, in his opinion, is a tourism agency. <laughs> They're just trying to go somewhere further away. Uh, and he says, but people are stupid. And you have to tell them what tourism is all about. Because think about it. Even though they've had wheels since prehistoric times, they didn't put them on luggage until the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the philosophy of what we're doing. Um, today's visitors want two things when they travel, and that's seamless experience and customer service with a smile, which is harder to get. And part of our position, our responsibility as a DMO for Sumner County is to help the businesses in the county understand that and work together. As a business owner and myself, over the years, I know that you're focused on your business, and it's hard to consider how my business impacts the guy down the road or the lady that runs this. And so our goal as a county entity is to help them understand it's got a flow and to help our visitors get that flow and have access to it very easily. So it sounds kind of foo foo and West Coast, but we're trying to make it easy for our visitors to come here and to have the right kind of experience so they tell their friends about it. And, um, Does the chamber help with that, though? Is that we, part of we, are, we are working in parallel with the chambers mm -hmm. because they are working to help their businesses improve and, and bring people to their cat, to their city, their municipality. And our goal is the same, except we're trying to bring it from outside the county. With that interconnectivity. So go do that. If you like this, you'll love this. Yes. Yeah. And uh, one, I'd love one of the things that the, um, at this conference they said, our job in tourism is not heads and beds, because that's where the money comes from, but is it is leveraging tourism to improve the communities for our residents. Mm -hmm. I like that. So it's a bigger picture. And uh, so anyhow. And so one of the things, the last paragraph I put there, that we, we are starting to use the phrase, thank you for supporting tourism in Sumner County, whenever we talk to anybody here in the county, to put tourism in their minds and to help them understand what we do as a tourism entity. Um, again, at the conference, it was pretty funny when he said this, because people do not know what tourism does. In fact, your family probably doesn't know what tourism does. And I'm like, you're right. <laughs> My wife has no clue. When I was teaching economics, I talked about different industries. I talked about tourism. And they say, why would anybody come to Summer County? Mm. And that's, that's what most people look, the way most people look at it. Why would anybody come here? Yeah. It's like, well, there's lots of reasons people come here, and I, you know, I've pointed that out to them and talked to them about it. But, uh, but you know, the general public has no clue that we have any kind of business. And, and when they, but if they had that tax bill, they would notice. Right. 
and we're, we're working to increase that number. So. Okay, one last thing I want to add, and I'm really excited about this. This is an opportunity that came to us that we've been working hard on. Uh, this is the 100th anniversary of the coming year of the Grand Ole Opry. It is the 50th anniversary of the Sumner County Museum. As a result of that, there is, uh, if you walk into the Sumner County Museum, and if you haven't done that, you should, because I have, and I'm the new guy. Uh, as you walk in, you will see this picture right here on the wall, right after you go into the museum. It's uh, Dr. Humphrey Bate and the Possum Hunters. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's okay. Yep, Dr. Yeah. Humphrey Bates and Possum Hunters. Well, they were a local band uh, that formed, and they were the first string band to ever perform at the Grand Ole Opry. Oh, really? Yeah, and they are from Sumner County. Well, two of their descendants are still here in Sumner County, and they are still playing music. In fact, they have some of those original instruments that are in that picture. And they recently did a fundraiser for the museum and dressed up and played the music of the Possum Hunters. And this had such a wild review and positive uh, impact that they went to our friends at Ball State, and I can't remember his name now. Steve. Steve something. He's the, the guy that does recording studio at Ball State. Um, and approached him about making an album. Well, Steve, whose last name escapes me. I'm sorry, Steve, if you're watching. Something like that? Yeah, Steve has something. Uh, apparently has a background with... Uh, with the Grammys, and his comment to this group was, this is a Grammy award-winning album before it's ever recorded because of the historical value. Mm -hmm. And combining that with um, with the 100th anniversary of the um, Grand Ole Opry, we are going to, I've already talked to State Tourism, and they're involved now, and we're going to talk more next week at the Governor's Conference on Tourism, but we are putting pressure the right word on the um, Grand Ole Opry to include this band in their 100th anniversary celebration, either on stage or at least on WSM radio. And um, we have approval from the owner of Dot Records, which still exists, at least in ownership, to record this album on that label, which was owned by a guy Gal here in Galveston. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, now this is when it gets really crazy. Uh, Gallatin was one of the first I don't want to say the first because I'm still researching the real history, but there's a display at the museum about this. One of the first airmail drops in the world. Mm -hmm. And it was done from a balloon, a hot air balloon that came from Buffalo, New York. It's called the Buffalo Balloon. And they dropped <laughs> a, a letter with a ribbon down into a field here in Gallatin. And in honor of that, the technicians involved in this recording have the intention, and they're still working through the details, so hopefully this can happen, to broadcast this album up to the moon and have it come back, and that will be the recording on the album. This will be the first album in history recorded from the moon. Okay, in honor of that. <laughs> does, it, does it improve the sound quality? Well, or is it using it that right amount? I don't know. I don't know. It didn't sound like Bill 45. So, um, Bill 78. Yeah. I didn't want to take myself. <laughs> Um, anyhow, so this is a project that we are involved in, and I'm going to um, involve us financially. They've asked us, uh, they've got some money coming from the, uh, the Arts Commission or whatever it is of the county, and uh, they've asked us for some additional funding to help print the albums. I don't know if that's the right word, but to, to make the LPs. They'll mm -hmm. actually be LPs. Wow, they're actually going to be LPs. Yes. Oh, yeah. The bottom was big. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it's not a huge number, but I'm going to ask uh, the board if, I don't know where we'll be at the end of the year, but I'd like to take some of our leftover money from last year and kind of say I want to be part of this project. Because the idea of bringing a Grammy home uh, into Sumner County and having that to publicize. And, and on top of that, now I'm also working with the state to get a, a, a historical marker for the, the possum hunters. Are they boys more than no, not that way. Well, I don't know exactly okay. where, but we'll do that research, but somewhere uh, because of the history involved. So and my reason for evolving tourism is because it creates another reason to come to Sumner County, and that's my reason. It's not just the excitement of a grand or anything like that, but it's from a tourism standpoint, it gives us another reason to bring people here. So, um, oh, I like that. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about this. Yeah. So Dr. Humphrey Bate and his possum hunters. Now, I'm... 
as of that, uh, the uh, museum has a cemetery tour every year. Yeah. This year, the uh, the theme is music, so it's going to be uh, people are portraying musicians, mm -hmm. singers, and such. So that's uh, that's the theme of the uh, cemetery tour this year. So, yeah. The first Saturday in October. Yeah, that'll be awesome. And Andrew is, I think, one of our guides. Our tour guide for music. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So Clark can be one of the cemetery guides. Okay, that's my report. Any questions? I can answer. Oh, occupant and big guy. Four of us. Looks looking good. Yeah. Oops. So our next meeting so is up. November 19th at 4. Well, it's been 4, but don't we be at 4.30? Well, yeah, no that's confusion. <laughs> really, uh, I, 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 I think last month we said 4. The minutes state 4 o'clock. Right. The third Tuesday at 4 o'clock. So it's at four. I was standing there and I was like, I thought we I mean, could I had you today. Today's got changed. It's got changed for today. But, yeah. but if you go to the county calendar, it shows 430. It shows four. On the calendar. Oh, okay. Or today, it just it shows 430. But I th we thought we were at four. Yeah. I wondered. Oh, I think four. I thought, I, I didn't remember us changing it. I remembered it. Discussing it, but I remember the date more than the time. For years, we met at 4:30. Oh, did we moved it back to four. And at, some, at some point, it got moved to four. To yeah. Four. Um, it, We've met at multiple different times. I just know well, that four thirty probably better for most people. Yeah. July 16th yeah. meeting, there was a motion that it be on the third Tuesday mm -hmm. at 4 p.m. So we did four. So it is four o'clock. So we kept it at four. Yeah. So what do y'all want to do? We have a quorum. Actually, I, I keep keeping it at four is better because Deborah can come. Yeah. She's on planning. She, yeah. When they have one, they don't have them every month. I mean, you know, because somebody, somebody who has a nine-to-five job, they're not going to be able to be on this board. I, have, I do have an job. Like that. I have that. I can arrange my time. Right. But it's... Four o'clock works for everybody on the side. I mean, it doesn't matter. I just, I'll have to reach it. I'll have to start early. The people who work at 4 30 probably works better than four, but I'm retired, so it doesn't come back. Yeah. Um, I have no problem. I can always scale that much. Why did we change it, though? Is that in a minute? There was some discussion about it. I don't think I captured all the discussion. Why don't we put that on old business? Can't we make it? Can we just make our next meeting at four o'clock? Uh, or can we? We, we? we should leave it at four if it's in the minute. I don't know why today's was at four thirty. Did David have something to do with it? No, that was that was not okay. Oh. Aren't like y'all, what are y'all's office hours? We close at 4.30, but there's still someone there. We can, oh. it doesn't matter. I think they were all. Uh, the only issue with me, the later meeting, is the people who work here at this building. Yeah. Because the building closes at 4, uh, the yeah, office they don't is closed at 4.30, and they don't want us here any, but any later than necessary, because they don't get paid over time, they just stay here until they close the building. So, yeah, meeting at 4, that would be probably get us out by five at the latest I would think for most most meetings. I have no problem with four o'clock. I don't mind if it's well that's probably why we put it in the minute. Let's say four o'clock. You tell how much I worry about it. Because it's not eight o'clock in the morning, I'm not there. Sorry it's already in the minute. Yeah. 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 Okay. Next I'll get it down on my calendar for that. Right. Just for clarification's sake, today's agenda does say four o'clock. Um, I don't know if you want to change that to 434 for the record. Yes. Okay. I guess. She did change it on that last thing. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. today's. Yeah. I think it changed three times. So we're keeping, <laughs> it, <laughs> we're keeping <laughs> it at the <laughs> hour. I understand. <laughs> oh, yeah, that happens in the middle of the night. So the last person is to adjourn. Second. Aye. Aye. Okay. Now this uh, data thing, Jeff, the student thing we're getting. Does that? What does it do about? Uh, uh, what, 
does it track? Are we tracking the data from last week at the Highland Cup games? Is that being tracked by somebody? 